When you look at old photos from the Apollo program, you see a lot of men. But check out this shot. Without a young woman named Margaret Hamilton, the lunar landing, walking on the moon, it might have been a different story. That's source code for the Apollo guidance computer. A five-foot pile of computer instructions that sent the crew of Apollo 11 to the moon and got them back. But look at that. <laughs> we were having a good time. They were worried it was going to fall on me, but I, <laughs> I liked the idea of stacking them up. Written by Hamilton and a team of software programmers at MIT's Instrumentation Lab, now known as Draper. Developed when many thought software was an undergarment. A puzzle, it seems, even to astronauts like Mike Collins. You go up to MIT, had you ever heard the word software before? I don't think so. MIT was a mystery to a large extent. <laughs> Hamilton's husband was studying law at Harvard. She was a mom with a math degree who boldly pursued a job at MIT, at the time almost unheard of. Were people judgmental about you and your life? It was the culture. One of the men walked up and asked me, how could I leave my child at home? And that's when I said to him, you do what's right for you and I'll do what's right for me. Her code would be housed in a computer astonishingly small. So this is the actual size of the computer? Yeah, so the computer is just this kind of big shoebox, maybe a big wedding cake kind of thing yeah. back here. In an era when computers took up whole basements, Apollo 11s could only be one cubic foot. It was the first computer to guide a human anywhere, let alone to the moon. The Apollo computer today would be considered a small fraction of your phone's processing power. Hamilton often brought her young daughter, Lauren, to work, especially at night or on weekends. It was during one such visit that Lauren was playing astronaut on the Apollo simulator, flying to the moon, when... All of a sudden, it came crashing down, her simulation. The system crashed. I thought, whatever she's done, that can't happen on a flight. That would not be good because it was program one, which is a pre-launch program. She's out in outer space, yeah. and she hit the keys for yeah. pre-launch. Right, and it clobbered everything. Hamilton tried to warn NASA, but... They said, yeah, but the astronauts are so well trained, it won't happen, it just won't happen. Sure enough, while in space on Apollo 8, astronaut Jim Lovell accidentally punched in that same code. For some reason, we suddenly got program 01 and a no attitude light on our computer. It took hours to get the navigation system back on track. Hamilton and the team at MIT knew the astronauts were risking their lives on the software they wrote. At the time, a man's life was at stake. The software had to work the first time, and there was no second chance. And it also had to be able to detect errors in real time and recover from them. Hamilton software was put to the test in just that way on Apollo 11. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were descending to the moon's surface when... Program alarm. They see an alarm, and Buzz Aldrin calls it out. Bravo 2. I just remember thinking, if it's going to go off, does it have to go off now of all times? <laughs> The alarm went off because non-critical data was suddenly overloading the computer. Now, thanks to people like Margaret Hamilton, the computer realized, I'll just drop my low priority stuff and I'll keep the important stuff going and I'll soldier on. The whole system recovered from that anomaly beautifully well and, and Armstrong landed on the moon. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. Neil Armstrong steps out of the module steps foot on the lunar surface. What were you feeling at that exact moment? Not only was it that the astronauts were the first people on the moon. That's one small step for man. But it was like our software was the first software to run on the moon. One giant leap for mankind. I just felt fortunate. Such an amazing woman. Wow. And you have to understand the context of this time, right? Her husband's at Harvard Law School. And during that era, there was almost an expect expectation that if you had a spouse with you in Cambridge, 
She was there to serve tea. Mm. <laughs> she was there to aid you in your in your ongoing life. Or if life. you had kids, as <laughs> exactly she said, right. somebody saying, a "Why are you mom, home with your child?" A mom with a math degree, but okay. she said the atmosphere atmosphere at yeah. MIT was very collegial, and they all had this idea that they were actually pioneers. Mm. They were doing something no one had done before. The computers filled the basements of sure. buildings back then. These were the first mobile computers ever designed. You brought Some, show and tell. Oh my gosh. You're you're gonna love this, right? So, mm. people in history get to be honored sometimes oh, in wow. some of the most amazing ways. Oh, and goodness. if you look very closely, Lego ran one of those sort of, hey, tell us who we should pay attention to yeah. as with Apollo coming up. There's Margaret Hamilton. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, cool. that's, so neat. that's awesome. Over that's awesome. Overdue. What's right. she doing now? Here. She has her own business. Dude, listen, she went She's to running work. for president. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she went to work in Cambridge. She started working first in meteorological stuff yeah. and then on some defense stuff. Yeah. So she was in this space, in this infancy of this industry, <clears throat> heard about the, uh, the job opening at MIT and NASA. They made her the head of that program. <sighs> well deserved. And when you think about what the computer technology that Put oh, man oh, oh, on yeah. the moon. Ding, 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 ding. This cell phone, the one I hold in my hand, one million times more powerful than the computers, the one that on the module, <laughs> yeah. the landing module, and the command module. The one on each com million times more powerful. God. It's incredible. What uh -huh. a feat. Well, we're going to really soak in this Don't anniversary over the next few days. I know you've got a lot more stories to tell here, including a look at the suit that helped Neil Armstrong take those first steps. And Al is going to be live at Kennedy Space Center next Tuesday for the official oh, anniversary that's be of good. launch that's day. Good. One of our proudest that's moments. So cool. You'll be geeking out down in oh, Florida yes. for sure. Oh, oh yes. I get to, get to host the Buzz Aldrin Foundation Gala Tuesday night. So it's going to be very exciting.